In one of the previous parameter geometry classroom videos, I came to a conclusion that none of the parameter tandem setups is perfect. In this video, I'm going to prove myself wrong. Everything on an aircraft must have a reason. Ignore the status quo, imagine from scratch, and build what you can justify with science. Fail five times to succeed once. This is how we innovate paramotors. And for you, understanding the science behind will make you a smarter pilot. This weird thing is a prototype of a paramotor tandem setup version 3 that we are currently working on. And I believe this setup does it all. It allows great reach for the brake handles during, during the flight. It provides the maximum uh, leg room for the pilot to run. Also maximum authority to steer the passenger during the takeoff phase. I can operate it all by myself, so I don't need an assistant to rig the passenger. I can do it first. If assistance is there, assistant can grab the bar and pull in the front and I can lower the passenger in flight to have unobstructed view in the air. Let's dig into the details. If you haven't seen the parameter geometry classroom video that I mentioned before, please watch that first. I don't want to repeat all the geometry and theory that mentioned there. Link is in the description. Now, this is pretty much the standard parameter tandem setup. A triangle compared to a regular paragliding setup that triangle should be twice as long now if you make it longer it also gets taller the triangle that means brake controls of the glider get higher and higher and sometimes they're very uncomfortable or difficult to reach i came with a solution for this and that is making this carabiner part of the triangle so the bar is connected to the gooseneck bar and the carabiner, which the whole carabiner with the strap is probably this long, will become parts of the triangle. This lowering the, the main carabiner effectively by 12 centimeters, 5 inches. And it really makes a difference. Those 5 inches really make a difference. Another benefit of this setup is that now that the bar is directly connected to the gooseneck bars, it removes this play between the bar and, and the engine. So all the thrust is more directly transferred into the, the spreader bar and into the passenger. So it's more direct control. And also when I, when I twist, rotate my body, I can, I can steer the passenger much better. The distance between the pilot and the passenger is, a, is the crucial thing for providing enough legroom for the pilot to run. Now, but that's just one thing having the pilot getting lifted first is the thing that really makes the huge difference because if the pilot get lifted first then in the final phase of the run when i need to make the long and fast steps i'm not kicking his feet anymore and the same for landing it's beneficial to have the passenger up higher on landing so me as a pilot i will touch down first make the first few fast steps and the pilot will touch down later one at much slower speed so it's less likely to screw up this is how it would look like in a takeoff and landing position passenger is significantly higher you can see the difference here now this is very easy to achieve you simply move the carabine a little bit more forward pilot goes down passenger goes up great for takeoff and landing horrible for flight because the passenger is blocking the view of the pilot so this is what i was thinking about how can we achieve both that means somehow change the geometry after takeoff so i would get him up high okay he's blocking my view during the takeoff but well, that's fine and then later i would somehow get the pilot down lower the pilot down so i have an unobstructed view now there's the two ways how to achieve it either somehow get the carabiner backwards which would change the whole balance, which is really difficult. That carabiner is heavily loaded, tons of friction, it's very difficult. But there is another option. Move the passenger forward. Moving his weight forward will make kind of this end, not heavier, but on a longer leverage, and we'll just pull the nose down. So welcome to 
the Scout Tandem Spreaders version 1. We basically made an extension of the bar here to the front, attached rope to the bottom of the harness, and by pulling on this rope, I'm just pulling the passenger forward, he's pivoting around the carabiner, moving his center of gravity forward, pulling the nose down, but secondarily, it is also tilting the passenger, so the passenger gets more reclined and his head goes down even further. So this is how Tandem Bars version 1 look like in real, in flight. Now, this is all great in theory, but we need to fly it. Thanks to Martin for my flying buddy. This was the third attempt with the, with the Scout tandem bars and finally the first successful one. First one was total disaster. Martin was there recording it. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Second one was better and this is the third attempt and it was a really good one. So the system works. Martin got lifted first. So for the last steps when I really had to run fast, he was already lifted and I could do long steps and run very fast. Then in the air, he was high above me so I couldn't see anything, but the, the position adjustment system worked perfectly. So I got him down probably like five inches, which was just enough for me to see over his helmet uh, to see uh, where we are flying to. And for landing, I got him, uh, I, I released the positioning system again so he got up high that means I landed first did the first few fast steps and when the glider finally slowed down uh, he touched down as well so overall super happy with it now one thing that is still needs refinement obviously the whole thing is a very improvised prototyping ugly welding but one thing that causes some problem is here is the attachment point of the of the of the carabiner and the bar attaches slightly lower so what it is doing it's tilting me a little bit in the air so i'm more inclined forward uh and i need to solve that and i will and I guess how already. Version number two, we did only very minor modification, but it made a huge difference. Instead of connecting the spreader bar to the front of the gooseneck bar, we made it longer in an L shape and connected directly to the frame. It felt much better. I had much more direct kind of steering authority onto the passenger. I don't know, it just felt better. It, it was good.
and now this is version number three. There's also a very minor change, but it seems to provide pretty reasonable effect. So the difference is that I made this loop a little longer. Let me explain the theory behind it. On the version two, I had this loop as short as possible in order to minimize the play and have more direct steering authority onto the passenger. Now, why I'm thinking of making this longer is when I pull the bottom of the seat of the passenger, the passenger will pivot on a longer radius. That means it will be easier to pull passenger seat a little bit more forward and there will be a larger component of moving the CG of the passenger forward and lesser component of tilting the passenger into a reclined position. We modified the bars and we did the hang test and it worked nicely. Now there is one little thing I, need, I still need to do before I can do a in-flight test with the version 3 and that is add a strap here. Why is that? As I made this longer, in the takeoff position, if I apply power and start kind of pulling, this, this strap would go backwards, making the passenger come effectively much closer to me as a pilot, narrowing the gap, reducing my, my clearance for running. This means I would add this strap, this will be tension only during the takeoff phase, and it will be pulling the passenger away from me or, or with me. In flight, when I pull the passenger forward, this strap will get loose and basically unused. So we need to do this little modification and we can do another test flight. For sure, we will cover that on video. I'm pretty confident it will work. I see no reason why shouldn't we did the hang test and the only thing is steering authority. Uh, it, it's gonna it's gonna work, I'm pretty sure. If you have a different opinion, uh, let me know in the comments. This is still work in progress. This is still research and development in progress and unfinished work. With version, number, with version 3, we are still far away uh, from the finish line. I would still like to fine-tune the geometry. I would like to reshape the front U-bar a little bit, make it a little longer and, and pointing the nose down a little more. I would like to reshape the L-bar here in the back and I would like also make the bars a little bit wider because they're kind of, kind of conflicting with the, with the gooseneck bars on the paramotor. And there's a lot of work in fine tuning and engineering all the little details. Definitely we want to make a quick attachment to the frame. This was all just improvised, uh, not very user friendly. Uh, design a quick connect between the L shape in the back and the straight line on the bar, so somewhere here. This will allow me to first check that the passenger is strapped in correctly, then walk around it, connect the bar, connect the strap and take off. A carabiner position adjustment, that was the thing that failed in the, in the very first flights several times. I was just naive and I thought one solution would work and didn't. So if we improvise with some ugly bolts, well, we need a final, we need a final solution for that. Design a cool pulley system. So, uh, pulling my son was easy, but pulling a 90 kilo pilot, that was already quite hard work. But, but there is one thing, so in the beginning it's, it's quite easy to pull, and in the final phase it, it gets a lot harder. So I'm thinking of designing a, maybe a two-step system, where I would pull one-to-one -one at the beginning, and then two-to-one in the end. And of course we need to make it nice, compact and collapsible 
uh, for, for transportation. So there's a lot of work ahead. Uh, we will definitely document our progress. It will take several months to finish this project. And the primal reason is that the Varimatic propeller is our priority. Is the, it, it is the first in-flight adjustable propeller for paramotors in the world. In next week, most likely, I will receive another version, a version that I'm hoping will be probably the final design. A lot of testing, a lot of flying, and a lot of fun waiting for me. And uh, we will continue with the tender bars as soon as we're finished with the Varimatic prop. Guys, thank you very much for all the comments and support that we are receiving from you. We would greatly appreciate if you hit the like button, if you share these videos, if you subscribe to, to our YouTube channel. It feels very rewarding on behalf of the whole team. I would also greatly appreciate some comments or advice or any suggestions for further improvements. We've received a lot of inspiration from you guys and it's kind of, it feels good to build things within the community. Okay, now stop watching YouTube and go flying. Ciao.